How to Harness the Power of Your Voice to Address the Climate Crisis, Part 2, Your Voice. Welcome back. I am Nadia Colburn here with Extinction Rebellion in Massachusetts. I This is the second of three videos. We are talking about how to be your own media center to talk about the climate and ecological crisis and why this is so important. I am a creative writer and writing coach, and I know how powerful our voices really are if we just use them. So I'm glad you're here. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to harness the power of your voice, why talking about the climate and ecological crisis is so very important, and who to talk to and how to talk to them. So where to begin? First, talk to the people you already know. You might feel overwhelmed talking about the climate crisis and thinking, where do I even begin? It's very simple. Just be yourself. Talk to the people you already know. Don't worry about doing it the right or the wrong way. Just talking is what's important. The second thing to keep in mind is, remember, we just need to mobilize 3.5% of the population. So that means we don't need to convince climate change deniers. That's not our role. According to a recent poll, 66% of Americans believe that they have some responsibility to effectively change, to affect change around the climate. Already, 64% of Americans believe that the climate crisis is an urgent issue. And 79% of people say that they believe the authority of scientists. In other words, we have the majority on our side. So pick the low-lying fruit. People want to be involved, and our job is to help people see that they can take the responsibility that they want to take. So we're going to be breaking the silence, and talking is an essential ingredient for change. And before we talk about how to talk to people in more detail, I want to emphasize again that just talking itself is extremely powerful. Remember, Extinction Rebellion's first demand is tell the truth. Be a truth teller. According to Yale Program of Climate Change Communication, only 23% of people in the U.S. hear their family, friends, or coworkers talk about global warming at least once a month. In other words, people are not talking about this much. And 63% of people rarely or even never hear people talking about the climate and ecological crisis. So talking is very, very powerful and important. If we don't talk, what happens is we are led into a spiral of silence. The German political scientist Elizabeth Noel Newman identified what she called the spiral of silence. People have a natural fear of social isolation. So if they have the perception that another position is more popular than the one that they hold, they're more likely to be quiet about their own position for fear of disapproval. And the group that is perceived to be dominant becomes even louder. This is particularly helpful for dictators and autocrats who want to play into this spiral of silence. And when it comes to the climate crisis, don't forget that the money and the interests of the fossil fuel industry are really working to keep us quiet. Since the Paris Agreement in 2016, the five biggest fossil fuel companies have spent more than $1 billion on misleading climate information and branding. Again, I want to emphasize that every time we communicate in some way about the climate and ecological crisis and the tools we have to overcome it, we are breaking the spiral of silence that the few people who profit off of fossil fuel industry and uh, the powers that be are wanting to keep us trapped within. The climate scientist Catherine Hayhoe has a popular TED talk called The Most Important Thing You Can Do to Fight Climate Change, Talk About It. So please again remember, just talking is taking a powerful action step. 
You don't need to be shy. And the more you do it, the easier it will get. So how to talk to people. First, remember that we are motivated by love more than by fear, and we can speak and act because we love and value our world. Imagine that you had a child who was sick. You would talk about that. You would get this tools and the medicine and the attention that your child need because you love your child. That's what we're doing for the earth. We are talking about it from love and from a sense of belonging and connection. So you don't need to be apologetic in any way. So how to talk to people. One, speak from your own experiences. Be personal and respectful. Talk to people as equals. Don't talk down to them. Don't assume that they are uneducated or apathetic. In other words, be yourself. Tell people your own trajectory. Tell people your own concerns. Tell people what you are doing. Don't tell other people what they should do, but rather share what you are doing with other people. And of course, you can invite them along with you. Number two, connect the climate crisis to other issues people are concerned about. So people have lots of concerns, of course, the pandemic, politics, uh, all kinds of social issues, make connections between the climate and ecological crisis and the other things in our world. We're all interconnected, it's all interrelated. Just weave the climate crisis and the environment into your conversations about other topics that people are already thinking about. Make sure the urgency of the situation comes across in your conversation. So use terms like, climate crisis or climate emergency, not just climate change, and um, help give people the big picture. You can talk about the sixth extinction. You can talk about the devastating feedback loops of warming air and water and the escalation and urgency of the problem. You don't need to scare people. You're just sharing the truth. Um, and again, we can speak from love uh, rather than fear or um, threat, but rather from love couple urgency with action. So if we just give people bad news, that's overwhelming. But there are tools and we have the tools that we need and groups like Extinction Rebellion are very easy to get involved with. So tell people about the great solutions that we already have. Project Drawdown is a comprehensive guide to the 100 best solutions. Tell people about how easy it is, how much fun it is, how satisfying it is to be involved in uh, activist groups. and. Uh, show that there are real steps that can be taken. And also make clear that every little step is very valuable. No one needs to do something super big. If you have time and energy, great. But again, just talking to people is so important. Just communicating, do what fits in your life. Uh, Communicate to the people in your life that there's no pressure and that every little bit of action makes a really big difference. It's also really helpful to talk about structural change because sometimes with uh, the climate and ecological crisis, people can feel that um, what they need to do is completely reduce their individual carbon footprint. That's not what we're talking about. A recent study based on Project Drawdown data concluded that individual actions alone could reduce only 20 to 37 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, if we all were as ecologically conscious as possible, still we would have another 63 to 80 percent of actions that would needed would be needed and they could only come from collective action. So it's so important. We don't need to be perfectionists in our own individual lives, but we need to be part of a bigger movement. That said, every individual action can be part of a ripple effect. So if you are taking individual action to reduce your carbon footprint, to change some of your own habits, uh, to in be involved in activism, talk about your actions because that becomes part of a ripple effect. Remember, worker protections, child labor laws, the weekend, clean water, clean air, free education, all of this comes about 
through legislation, not from individual action alone. And that legislation often is spurred on by grassroots movements and ultimately is only put into effect when our elected officials, officials listen to the will of the people and create laws and what makes them listen to the will of the people. So it's very interesting. Civil disobedience and protests are the most effective ways to get the attention of the media and of government leaders. Scenarios of conversation. So how do we talk about the climate crisis? Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you can bring it up. So if there's a conversation about how are you, talk about what you're concerned about, talk about some of the actions you're taking around the climate and ecological movement. If you're talking about current affairs, politics, social issues, health, the pandemic, talk about your concerns and your actions and how you see that they're all these different issues are connected to the climate crisis and ecological crisis. If you're making plans, if you're making plans for what you're going to do later that day or the next week or over the summer or the next year, talk about the impact it might have on the environment. Talk about how you're going through thinking about how it fits into the environment and your activism. If you're talking about dreams, hopes, fears for the future, talk again about what you're thinking about, worrying about, hoping and doing for the climate and the environment. So in this video, we talked about talking to the people in your life, communicating with them, how important it is to break the spiral of silence and just encourage you to be yourself and speak with love and enthusiasm. In the next video, we're going to be answering some common questions and objections and concerns about this kind of process. And we're gonna be talking about how to keep going to avoid burnout and to actually enjoy being a climate and ecological activist. So I'll hope to see you.